Hey guys, we're back at it today on the Chevelle Wagon. Today, the, the objective is brakes. So the plan for today is we'll put the new master cylinder brake booster on, we'll take the old hard lines off, we'll put new hard lines on, get them hooked in with the, the soft flexible lines that go to the wheel end. Hopefully we'll be bleeding brakes today, so let's get started. So we went to Willwood and got their setup for uh, A-bodies. We got a smaller uh, brake booster, so it'll fit with our valve covers because it's a big block in here. We want to have some extra clearance to get around things. We got a master cylinder. We got a manual adjusting uh, proportioning valve, so that way we can dial it in the way we want it to be. Uh, this comes with a uh, setup so you can activate the brake switch from here, or you can do it from in the car. We'll pick up in the car, but it does come with that option. And uh, it also comes with all the brackets and lines to mount the uh, proportioning valve to the master cylinder as well as the brackets to mount to the firewall. And then it, it comes with uh, the setup to get from the, the brake pedal to the master cylinder. Now the one thing to keep in mind with this kit is it doesn't come with the hardware to attach to the brake pedal on the firewall. So you either need to keep the hardware that you had or in my case if you didn't have it with when you bought the car you'll have to run out and get some. So um, it's fairly straightforward uh, setup. It starts with the brackets. I don't even know if the kit comes with instructions to be honest with you. We'll go ahead and open it up. But it comes with a variety of fittings um, so that you can get everything set up. And even most of these, let's see if this one does. These come with a setup so that you can bench bleed it yourself, which is, is nice. Um, I like to do it in the car just because it makes it a little bit less mess. And then all the hardware you need to get everything mounted together. And this comes with the hardware for mounting the hard the cap to the top, as well as the rubber boots that you need. And this, uh, this setup, depending on which rod you have, whether you have a, a short or a recessed set up like this so just keep in mind that the depth of the plunger you're going to have to get that right on your setup otherwise you um, won't be able to bleed the brakes properly we'll start throwing this stuff on here and get everything dialed in and if we run into any challenges we'll or tips or tricks along the way we'll point those out to you guys and uh, let's go ahead and get started All right, guys, well, we've got the booster in here. We got it hooked up to the brake pedal already. We actually got it first time, which I feel like never happens. So uh, that's good. We got the linkage in there correctly. We got everything secured down to the firewall like we need it. There's not a lot of clearance back in here when you use this. So make sure you get everything lined up and then you might want to slide the booster back off so you can tighten the hardware against the firewall. That'll make it a little bit easier. And then once everything's up here, you can get into it. I'd recommend a ratcheting wrench, but you can get into it with a regular box end wrench. Um, unfortunately, it looks like our T-handle valve cover hardware isn't going to work. It uh, is making contact with the brake booster. I thought I would have just enough clearance. I, I won't be able to take the valve cover back off with the brake booster in here, and that's just really not worth it for these T-handles. So um, it already didn't fit over on the passenger side because of the air conditioning. So we'll figure out something else to do for valve covers. 
I just thought the T handles would be a good look. Um, such an, um, I might be able to get shorter ones, or what I was thinking I might do is just cut this, uh, shorten it myself, weld it back together, and then paint it back black, and we, I can shorten them all to whatever length I need them to, that way they're exactly the way I need them, so uh, that might be a more custom touch than just having regular hardware in there. So we'll go ahead and we'll get the master cylinder out of the paperwork, we'll check everything out, get it set up on the uh, table over there to bench bleed, and we can throw that in here too. So. We'll get this ready to take that, make sure we know what our plunger depth is going to be so we know whether we need that adapter like I talked about, and then we'll go ahead and get everything uh, bled on the bench. Then we can get it in the car and start setting things up. So here we go. All right, guys, so we'll bench bleed it uh, like the instructions say. You can do this in the car, but, you know, there's you know, obviously more than one way to do everything. So we'll go ahead and bench bleed it just so... I can show you guys this one way to do it. Um, so, as you can see, the way this master cylinder is set up is really universal. So, it's got ports on either side. So, obviously, we're only going to use one side of these because we're going to have a front and rear main line to the proportioning valve. We'll have one main rear line running all the way back and two fronts. So, what we're going to end up doing is these two that are the, basically the pasture side, we're going to block those two off with the caps that come in the kit. And then we'll go ahead and, we'll go ahead and set up the... Uh, bleeder kit and then we'll basically run the lines from here right into the top of the master cylinder and we'll bleed it for air bubbles so and then the kit they send you comes with two caps and then it also comes with different fittings depending on which brake lines you're going to run um, so because we're using these hard lines to the proportioning valve we'll, we'll use these ones here um, but they have these other larger ones as well These block off plates go on there and they look just like that. Once you have them installed. And then they're three quarter inch. You just want to snug them down tight so it won't leak on there. You don't have to heat in them or anything. Just snug. We'll do. Like I said, we'll use these smaller fittings for our adjustable proportion of them. And now that's set up and then the uh, proportioning valve mounts to a bracket that comes right here. Unfortunately, they didn't include that when they sent us the kit. Um, so we'll have to wait for that piece of it. But we can go ahead and get this mocked up, installed in the car and at least run the start running the hard lines. So this is the gasket that goes on it. Obviously, it only goes on one way, smaller side to the rear. And then the cover for it. And it uses these screws to hold it in place. I like it. It's just a cleaner bit, cleaner look. I don't know if it's for everybody, but I have this on another Chevelle, and I was happy with how it turned out, so I decided to go ahead and use the same kit. And because we don't have the bracket for the proportioning valve, we'll wait and we'll bleed this later. That way we can run all the hard lines, get everything where we need it to go. We'll bench bleed it, throw it in the car. We can hook it straight to the lines. We won't have to leave those uh, bleeders attached to it. There'll be less chance of making a mess. Not, no chance, just less chance. And then we can tighten up the screws.
and now we can go ahead and mock it up in the car. So this is the part where I was talking about earlier where it, you're going to have to do some measurements. The kit comes with several different plungers. Um, so depending on how your particular car is set up, you'll have to use different ones. So um, as you can see, this adapter, you can look in there, see how that's recessed. Certain plungers, if, they, if you'll notice it sticks out past it, you'll want this recessed one. If it's flush mounted like this one is, we'll, you'll stick this adapter in here and that'll make it a flush mount master cylinder. So this way, as soon as you start pushing on the brake pedal, you're activating the piston inside here rather than having to take up that void with your actual pedal and then applying brakes. So if you set this up wrong, it'll be hard to bleed and then you won't, you'll lose out on half of your master cylinder essentially. We'll remove this plastic cover and the styrofoam piece behind it. And like I said, so the, this is more of a flush mount style. So as you can see, that piston is all the way bottomed out. And that way, when we use when we put everything together in here, it will be making contact straight from the start. So our plunger is actually sticking out just a little bit, so we won't it won't flush mount. So we need to take that space up, um, make sure we've got all of the. We don't actually accidentally have it like partially depressed with the brake pedal. So we'll. Do that in here. So that's in there good enough for now. Like I said, we'll uh, attach the proportioning valve bracket once it gets here. But for now, we can still run the hard lines and get them up over here where we need them. And I'll show you roughly where the proportioning valve will be in space. So we'll show you guys what it'll look like when it's assemble this we can imagine what the bracket looks like for now so the bracket connects to both sides of the mounting t uh, bolts there and then the proportioning valve hangs out down here So once I, once the bracket's installed, it hooks in on these two using these two mounting provisions, and it'll be right there where we can adjust it uh, whenever we're trying to dial in for something specific. If we need more rear brake or less rear brake, so it'll just give us more options from an adjustability standpoint rather than just having a standard proportioning valve. That way, the other thing this buys us is options later. So obviously we have drum rears and disc fronts at the, at the moment. So we would need a drum disc set up for a proportioning valve. If we decide to go disc later, we can still keep the same proportioning valve, swap out for the disc in the rear and then take up all the adjustment right here. So we'll let this hang out for here now and it'll give us a target to run our hard lines to. All right guys, so we're gonna do hard lines, right? And what a lot of people think of is steel lines or stainless steel lines. And I'll be honest with you, those are great. Um, but if you're working in a garage like this, uh, those can be a problem, right? So obviously we're working in the garage here to show you guys what you can do with just a garage attached to your house because You know, not everybody can have a, a big shop space um, Not everybody has a lift either. So 
Um, while these are great, when you want to get the lines bent the way you need them, you end up with this really long line and you got to have the car way up in the air. You know, sometimes if you want to do it perfect and get all the lines right, because you got to bend it as you go. Um, so there's, but there's a way around that. So there's a solution to that. This stuff is called copper nickel line and you can get, uh, two 25 foot rolls of this and a bunch of fittings for, uh, like 50, 60 bucks. So it's, it's pretty affordable. But the nice part about this is it's way more flexible than stainless steel line, um, is and you know you can bend it with your hands to get the shape you need it in you know to get it around where you need to go without having to use a traditional tubing bender and needing lots of room so if you're cramped for space doing this in a garage with a set of jack stands and a jack this can be a lot easier when you're routing the lines because you can get the overall length that you need snip your fittings on either end get it connected on one end and start bending it around and you can it's forgiving so you can have it bent under the car the way you need it get under there start bending your uh, line the way you actually need it and get it up into place without having that rigid hard line you know where you've made that 90 degree bend point down at the floor and now you can't get the brake line under there so this can be a nice option if you're working in a garage with tight space So let's talk about what you need to do something like this. Obviously you need the line, like I said, when you order these kits, like you can get them on eBay and Amazon, and I'll put a link to a couple of them. They come with a big box, of, a big bag of fittings that you need to do brake lines. You can get this in, in brake line, you know, uh, all the way up to larger sizes for fuel lines and transmission coolers and stuff like that. But you'll need the line, obviously. I'll, I like to straighten it out so that, you know, it's laser straight in those spots where there's no bends and it looks a little bit more professional. You'll need a flaring tool of some kind. I still use a bend uh, tool like this uh, to put it in to get some of my other bends just so that I can really get the lines consistent and looking good. So it looks a little bit more factory and professional. You'll need a pipe cutter. I use this, a small one like this, really just because this gets into small tight spaces where some of the larger ones don't. You'll need the fittings, obviously. And then you'll need some kind of flaring tool. I really, you know, you can get any kind of flaring tool. They got them all over the place. You can rent one from O'Reilly's, AutoZone, Advance, all those places too. I really like this one that Eastwood has. Um, they have an on-car version of this that is probably better, but this is a double flare. So it's got a, this particular one has to be mounted in a vise to use. Um, but it, it has all kinds of uh, fitting sizes that it allows. But like I said, it's a double double flare so it'll you'll make sure things seal a little bit better well well i'll get it mounted up in the vise and we'll show you guys what a double flare looks like like i said a uh, double flare is going to work out real nice be way more uh forgiving in terms of uh leak proofing and stuff like that and you'll be overall happier with it and then of course when you do cut them you'll want some kind of deburring tool so i i also got this one from eastwood i like it this side does the outside so you run around the outside and then it's got a nice deburring tool for the inside of the, the line as well. So you'll run this on the inside diameter. This is for the outside diameter before you do your flare. And it'll just make sure your flares come out clean. You don't have anything in there. Um, but like I said, it's pretty straightforward. And I, you know, I know it can seem a little bit overwhelming at first if you've never tried it before. But, you know, if you do yourself some favors with some of this other stuff like this copper nickel uh, line that does make things a lot easier and we'll I'll show you as we're, we're putting this together So we'll go ahead and get this stuff in the vise get ready to go and then we will get the car up in the air And we'll start bending lines All right, so we'll get started by removing all these old brake lines to get them out of the way And once we have those out of the way we can start bending up our new brake lines. so uh, I'm going to start in the front just because I don't know why and that way it'll uh, build confidence for uh, when we get back here and things go completely out of the control and we'll see what happens. So like I said the first thing we got to do here is start coming through grabbing all of these uh, half inch or 9 16 bolts that hold in the old uh, hard lines. Once we get those off we can take the uh, hard lines out. Of course, my light is in the car. It's a great place for it. One of the tools I use in the shop all the time is this Milwaukee M12. 
Uh, it's a nice compact tool and I can use it all the time. It really speeds things up and I'm a big fan of any way I can do this stuff faster so I can get more done in the same amount of time. So they're pretty inexpensive. I think I got this for like $140 or something five or six years ago. Uh, but it, it really, it really does come in handy. got tons of torque, does what I need it to most of the time. And then it's tough enough that if you get into a spot where it doesn't have enough torque, you can use it like a regular ratchet. This is legitimately the first time I've ever pulled these wheels off, and I'll show you what, what I see over here. So, it's missing a few lug nuts. This is why you should always uh, check this stuff out. That one's way too short. I wonder if this has a spacer or something on it. Well, it looks like it might have broke off at some point. Uh, but I, I had a Chevelle one time that I bought when I was young, and I was driving it around with my young kids in the car. And I thought everything was good. The guy I bought it from seemed like a pretty solid mechanic. And I took the rear wheels off one day to look at the drums and there was nothing in there. They were put together wrong so that it all come apart. So just keep that in mind. So just a tip for you guys, because uh, engineers always love to hide bolts in a place where they don't make sense. So on these A-body cars, right behind the rear trailing arm uh, tie-in point to the chassis, there's a bolt on the top of the frame. So when you're going to remove the brake lines, keep that in mind. You've got these ones along the side, you can see that one there, right on the corner. There's one here, one here. And then, like I said, this one on the top of the rear frame. And then up here behind this, um, right up here, right behind what for me is a muffler mount, but you can see that bolt right up there. So just keep that in mind when you're working through these. <laughs> 